To prove that this is a live video, I have a shoe on my head. Hope you guys believe it now. This is a jet shoe, by the way. Uh, anyway, today we're going to talk about split. And we're going to talk about creating pressure on it with basic utility, mainly smokes. So when we play split now in competitive, even though just, you know, guys, want to remind you guys, I'm playing in Immortal 3 typically. Um, there's still a lot of misconceptions about how to create space, how to create pressure for opponents to not be certain about what is happening on uh, the minimap and what is happening in general on the map overall. And um, there's easy ways of doing that. The main smoker on Split is Omen. And Omen has the ability to smoke like every 30, uh, 30 seconds, essentially, right? Um, and re-smoke it. So when you play a little bit defaulty, more slow pace on attack, which I do believe is needed, because when we look at the minimap, let's say we're just playing standard stuff, right? And our opponent will have a Sage. So typically, when the opponent was just walling mid, that means you cannot really push towards A or B because of the fact that they're just going to over-rotate. If you're not going to have anyone destroy the wall on mid, you're gonna go into a stack, right? Which then makes you play a little bit slower, which is fine, but you need to understand one thing. By playing default, if you don't know what playing default is, type in exclamation mark default in chat on Twitch, or just go to the Lotus Lab episode that is explaining how to default, and watch that first, and then go back to this video. But the thing is about playing default is that you need to create a little bit of pressure and space um, to make it effective. How do we do that? First step, if there's a Sage Wall, we always destroy it first tempo. That means at the beginning of the round, we want to do something on mid to make sure that the wall is destroyed, right? And then we can uh, make another, another pressure point by using our smokes. Typically, if we have smokes, we can do something like this. Let's assume that the uh, Sage Wall got destroyed, right? And then our Omen or Brimstone can do just a basic smoke. Let's uh, pick uh, uh, Brimstone smokes because they're better visible. So... Typically, when you do a smoke in vents, that allows you to attack into heaven B by creating pressure points for the players that are in vents, they cannot check mid, and they cannot help the players in mail, right? You can alternatively use the same on mail and then go into vents to control vents early, and that's fine. But what is even more important is understanding that it's still like not a main objective to always control mid, because what you achieve by just destroying the wall is essentially the same. Players typically are not standing in mail because they have like a, a better understanding of the map when they control heaven A or uh, site A and then the players are, are just holding from heaven here and just looking at mid and they know if someone crosses to vents, right? What you t Most success that you can find with your smokes is essentially just smoking A. If you were watching VCT back, the, back in the day uh, when Viper got uh, kind of like, let's say, discovered, uh, for split, there was a very simple setup by playing Viper when you were just using a wall like this at the beginning of the round, essentially, right? Which allowed you to uh, to basically deny vision from for air players into a lobby, which then you could just go into ramp unspotted, right? And then there's the secondary smoke from from Vipers being used here to make sure that you don't get spotted from ramp as well. So you create all of this pressure and unknown for the players on the defense in this area. And you can do the same with just one Omen smoke, right? If you do something like this, if you have just one smoke, right? We're gonna just, wait, wait one second, we're gonna remove this so it doesn't obscure the vision. If you're playing Omen and you just smoke at the beginning of the round here, that forces your opponents to essentially either push for the smoke for early info or play deep ramp. So by using this smoke here, you can push the player from ramp to peak. And if that's happening, you can punish that those overpeaks by just having two players on A main, right? Let's say we have like just the Omen and Raze. Omen smokes early here in A main. And then we have this uh, new runway on the right side of A main. And you can just double peak that into ramp and just wait for your opponent to peak into. Because most likely a player for smoke will not go through, right? And that in this way, you have to think that Creating pressure towards this direction creates an outcome for you from the other direction, right? Like you're, like, like you're pressing a finger in the direction of the smoke and it pushes out a player because the pressure kind of like pushes them out. You know, you know what I mean? It's like a metaphor that I like to use. Um, it's like when you're press, pressing Play-Doh in your, in your hand and it goes through your fingers. You know, it's like you're making pressure and it just leaks 
through other entrances or exits that they will find, right? Like flowing water or the Play-Doh in this case. And that, that smoke achieves that. And it's underused. And also, by the way, if you're a defender, you should never smoke like this. If you ever want to smoke A, it's only when your opponents already cross the ramp and you want to help the players on A, which should be then like this, to make sure that the player from under will have an easier way of holding the cross, uh, the crosser against this place. But you can only smoke in this position when you know that your opponents already crossed the ramp, because if they didn't cross the ramp, smoking like this will essentially help them to go into this direction, right? And another thing that is very important, by the way, because we, we, we've met this today in, in Ranked, when attacking B, people also forget the order of um, priorities on, 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 the, on the site. Because what if, let's, let's just cut the map, right? Let's just cut the map. The areas that we have here on B site are like this. You have area number one, area number two, area number three, and area number four, essentially, right? So you, you, you kind of divide the, the map in different spots. And those spots are being taken one at a time. So you're using utility or you're using peaks to gather the space that you have here. First, you retake the A space, uh, sorry, the, the lobby space, then you go for the tunnel, then you go for, for the um, entrance of B site, and then you go to the actual site. And what I see typically from uh, support characters that don't think it, they, they are not thinking it through. The first thing that happens is there's there's a smoke on CT. Like it just makes no sense because you have to go first through this area first, so this smoke dissipates and it doesn't really provide you any value. So when you're playing smokes, it really doesn't really help you to smoke this CT area. It's better to put the smoke either on the cross here, if you specifically when you don't have a sage wall, right, then you need the smoke here to make a possible passage towards this side. But you can also do multiple smokes. Let's say you're playing brimstone. One of the options would be smoking like this, 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 and this. Those are three smokes on this side, but they will allow you to take a lot of space and also make it easier for you to check angles. Uh, I will actually show you in, the, in, 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 a, in an actual game, because what is very important is to understand that when you're going to be smoking that area, you can help yourself by clearing now the angles, right? Let's imagine we have the smoke over here, and we have the other smoke over here. Now, when I'm going forward towards the side, by the way, the smoke needs to be more to the left, I can now check this side here right, this side here, without being exposed to heaven, and the third smoke also helps us for to make certain that the players from heaven don't feel inclined into, like, just peeking on you, right, because they never have good uh, position, and they always are worried that they can go into crossfire, and also when they drop here, they go into a one-way, if you position this a little bit more to the right, right, so those smokes help you in isolating angles and getting the space, Right? If I put one of those smokes on CT, because what you typically will see is just this. Even if Brimson has three smokes, he doesn't know what to do with the third smoke. So he just smokes like this, or even worse, like this. Right? And that's about it. That's what the Brimstons will do. They will never use the third smoke. And this doesn't necessarily help you. Because all the areas that you have to clear are not affected by those smokes. Right? So you're you're not helping with the utility that you have, even though you used it. There's no value gained. You have to take first the space that is in front of you to make it valuable for the smokes to have an effect, because those smokes have an effect if you're already on site for the CT, and this smoke has an effect if you have taken the space on Heaven. And if you're just going through B main, well, then the players on Rafters are not affected, right? So um, it, it's something that many players miss when they think about smoking on, on, on maps because they think about default positions of smokes, but they don't think in what order are those smokes prioritized because we didn't get yet to the position where I can benefit from the piece of utility, right? And this is why I also just uh, always say, like, for example, when bind was a thing, right? Uh, wait, there's no bind now in Valopland? There's the, no way they just deleted it. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, okay, Breeze, there's no Breeze as well. Th that is 
Okay, that's very surprising. Anyway, let's let's talk about ascent then. Like smoking, for example, ascent. When you think about it, many people just smoke like this. This is basic smokes for for many players, right? I, I'm sorry, this is correct smoke, but many players just do this and fuck over the entire team. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the guide about the worst smoke environment that I that I recorded. But in general, many smokes on ascent are used like this when you could be more creative. Because what you can do is you can just smoke like this to help you isolate angles. Because this smoke doesn't really help when you think about it. It helps for the rotations, right? When those players are coming through here, yeah, that helps. Because they are not now uneasy when it comes to retaking space. But when you're taking space in the first place on site, this smoke has no value whatsoever, right? So, um, I mean, not whatsoever. It has minimal value. Maybe instead of just smoking heaven, you could reconsider smoking this way. Your teammates, of course, have to be a little bit more aware that you're smoking out from the exit, but now you can just scatter around on site and isolate angles, right? Even with a brim, you can even be more creative with stuff like this, for example. Like, it's, it's so hard to counter shit like this. Because you isolate angles and you're able to just sneak onto site, check the right side before being exposed, you can check the left side before being exposed as well. You can do stuff like this as well, kind of mimic like a phoenix wall or a viper wall to isolate the angles. You just have to be certain that everyone else understands that and that's not happening in ranked. But I digress. Anyway, the point is when playing the game, people are missing the objectives first and they think about default positioning on utility that doesn't impact you in the round yet. And that's very important for, uh, for creating pressure, specifically when, uh, when playing default, right? So that's why on A side, when you have seen uh, on split, we're going back to split, cypher cages are being just used like this. Early game, two cypher cages. Nats was, for example, doing that every round. Everyone who was playing on, on attack, he just does a lineup from this spot, at the beginning of the round, throws those two, not necessarily activates them first tempo, but he just presets up, presets up this um, those two positions because during the round, even when he's not around here, he might he's able to pop those cipher cages and create the pressure for the opponent, so they are not certain what is happening in a main unless an opponent literally stands here, right? And that's something that in ranked is so rare to find, and it's so it's even rarer to find people who understand why is this being made this way and what does it achieve? Because by doing those pressure points, by doing those smokes, you trigger rotations. And that's where the lurker of the team is able to give you info about the rotations. But again, that lurker needs to get into a position where he gets that info, right? For split, that'll be mid. That's why it's so important to gather the space on mid as well. Destroy the wall. Have a have a player even like you know stationed over here or here. And if possible, playing in vents would be the best for an attacker if you already committed and created space and pressure for mid, right? And then you just leave one player on the vents, and the other teammates are just working towards B or A, and the lurker gives you the info about the rotations. But that's I I guess uh, lurking is a topic of, um for a different video, um maybe the next one actually. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And we're going to see each other um, during the next one. Hopefully, maybe about lurking or communications. Bye-bye.